Welcome back. It is time for another Intrigue Journal. <sighs> Sorry, I have... I'm burping up uh, hot dogs. <laughs> it Apologize. It was good. It's time for another Intrigue Journal with the intriguing Juliana. Hello. Hello. Good morning, good morning. You guys. Well, last week, Sean Paul was talking about the intriguing things that happened in 2020. Mm -hmm. So I'm here to expand on one of them, UFOs. Because why not? It's 2020. Of course. Well, more specifically, the, the government's transparency about UFOs, which we're now going to call UAPs, OK? It all Do came we have up to. I know <laughs> it's hard, isn't it? Yeah. It all came about with this brow-raising announcement that they made that they created this task force to investigate. I need that slide. That let's first see. Slide. We'll skip over. Yeah. And, but can you explain you what UAP stands for again? Yes, unidentified aerial phenomenon. That's hmm. the task force. It's very hard to say. Yes, I know. it is. And why? Why the transparency now? It could have been motivated by the release of three videos that were taken by the U.S. Navy. Mm -hmm. These are kind of blurry. These are just the stills. We're going to get back to that later. But of these videos that were released, Harry Reid tweets out. Let's take a look at that. I think we have a video. It's video. Maybe it's video A. Harry Reid tweets out about it. Okay. That. It basically tells us that they know, they're aware of these goings on, and he's saying that, that we need more transparency about it. Okay. okay, here's, we're looking at that okay. on the screen. There we go. Okay, so I didn't is, hear anything, so there we go. <laughs> this is not the first, the first time that we've had a task force, okay? Harry Reid actually, mm -hmm. we can go back to that other slide that we had up there for a moment. Harry Reid actually was, funded this second one, this Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, ATIP they call it. Hmm. Prior to that it was Blue Book. They were, they were in the shadows for a while then. Now they've been declassified. But when it gets interesting, this story, because a man by the name of Lou Elizondo actually headed up that last program, that ATIP program. Mm -hmm. And I'll go to the next slide, please. Lou Elizondo, and he decides that there's not enough transparency, that they're not taking it seriously enough, these threats. So he decides to leave his post and right about that time, and shortly thereafter, is when these videos get leaked, okay? Mm -hmm. He ends up becoming a key player, playing a key role in Identified, a History Channel program. Okay, there's a lot of confusion over the release of the videos. Now, some will say that it's intentional confusion. Investigative reporters like Annie Jacobson, I've talked about her before, will say that the government, government specifically tries to create these disinformation campaigns to mm -hmm. confuse the enemy or the public, who knows, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So the fact that the videos came out right around the time Elizondo leaves his post mm -hmm. suggests maybe he arranged for that ahead of time. Just keep that in mind as we go through the timeline, okay? okay? This is what we know. I'll go to my timeline slide here. Um, the New York Times first puts out this, this story in 2017 it's it's sort of quietly embedded within an online uh, story somebody pays attention they call the DOD Department of Defense denies the release okay there's nothing in the video that shows declassified so it makes you wonder is it real is it, is it mm -hmm. just fake mm -hmm. so there's always some like question right. about there it's muddy 2019 the US Navy acknowledges that these are the real deal these videos mm. 2020 just in April, is not, it's not until then that the Pentagon officially releases the video and they establish the task force. Now with that, let's go ahead and take a look at the first video. This is from 2004. This is uh, by, taken by Navy pilots aboard, aboard the USS Nimitz. I have never seen anything in my life that had the performance, the acceleration, and it's moving around left, right, forward, back. The radar immediately starts getting jammed. All of a sudden, it takes off. Mm -hmm. Wow. So he, so that was Commander Fravor, mm -hmm. and he and his team were they were on a routine training mission when they were directed to go 60 miles away because the, they had seen on radar objects going from 80,000 feet to 20,000 feet in a snap and then disappearing. So they go to this area. It's it's about 100 miles southwest of San Diego, mm -hmm. and the first thing they see is a disturbance in the water. It looks like a submarine just went under. Next, they notice almost suddenly. Uh, what is now described commonly as a tic-tac, because it looks like a tic-tac. It <laughs> only oh, it's boy. about 40 feet long, all right? And it mm. moves, it has, it has no sense of propulsion, no heat signature, it moves erratically. Commander Fravor s decides to go towards it, and that's when it shoots off. Wow. All right, the other thing <laughs> is, is that these things go underwater. 
This Tic Tac oh my was picked up by a submarine in the area going 70 knots. How, oh. how is this possible? Yeah, Where, how know. did this stuff come out? Okay, let's go to the next, the next two videos. They're combined. This is from 2015, and it is from Navy pilots aboard the USS Theodore Roosevelt. This is off of the East Coast. So they're seeing different forms. Not they, they didn't see the tic tac so much. They have they're seeing. Uh, please the next slide so we can see the form. There we go. Uh -huh. So they're seeing a top light form. They're seeing the what they describe as a cube within a cylinder. We're going to get to the last one shortly. Mm -hmm. So they see these cubes in the V formation. Five of them. At one point, one of the cubes goes in between two aircraft so close within 150 feet. They decide to file a report um, because this you know they they don't really know what it is. Is this part of our training? Right. Is this is this what are we yeah. seeing here? Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that a lot of these UAPs are found at military training bases oh. around nuclear missile areas mm -hmm. and above water. Okay? Interesting. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. It's very, it's very that. strange. Okay, so why the acronym though? Why did they change from UFO to UAP? Yeah. Now, some people will say they want to keep it more general. Annie Jacobson might tell you they want to distance themselves from the idea of extraterrestrial. Right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> the, maybe they think, or they, they actually have psychological committees that have decided that the American public can't handle, they can't handle this information, it would cause mass hysteria, and it's a national threat. So have you heard of COVID-19? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Wow. I yeah. think we can handle it. <laughs> I think we don't need them to decide what we can I handle. Said, thank we you. Can. Well, maybe okay. that's why they now came up with it. And yeah. they're like, okay, they can handle a little. <laughs> I don't know. But okay. there, there are people who have proposed that it has something to do with FOIA, Freedom of Information Act. When you file these FOIA oh. requests, you have to have the right language. You have to ask the right questions. Uh -huh. So when they control the language, they also control the narrative. Uh huh. Isn't That's that right. Interesting. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, let's take a look at the last video. It's video D, and this is a uh, this uh, pilot, commercial pilot, up in this is above Colombia, oh. and he sees one of these cubes. Now, I can't actually confirm, you know, if this is real or not. You just never know. You have to take everything, kind of with a grain of salt, right? What? what do you guys think, though? Do you think this is our technology? Do you, what do you think? See, that's where I was going back and forth on. Yeah. Okay, what if it's our technology they're testing, people have seen it, now they have to control the narrative, like you said, yeah. and then put this UAP into place, and then, like you said, confusion. So many questions. Then right. you don't know right. what's real, and you right. think everything's, yeah. well, the conspiracy theorists will think it's real, other people yeah. will think it's fake, so. You have people who have credibility that have been in the Air Force and different things that have written books and different things like that. Yeah. Like, uh, you yeah. know, I don't know. Well, let me ask you this, though. Okay, it's said that the military is 10 to 20 years ahead of what the public knows, mm -hmm. but did we have technology like this no. in the 50s? <clears throat> no. Okay, because in 1952, World War II pilots reported seeing what they describe as Foo Fighter fireballs in the air, oh. harassing them on their wings wow. in front of them, wow. different color lighted balls, red, green, white. And, and they just, they thought it was a secret German weapon that they kind of dismissed later on as being a mass hallucination. Oh my goodness. But do you remember with our NASA talk how once the war ended, Russia and the U.S. It was a it was a race to get to the German scientists because they yeah. had they had technology. They had yeah. technology. It's interesting. So it really news. is. Next okay. week we're going to get closer to home. Okay, closer oh, to home. Okay. And then I just feel like if we had aliens, they would have come to us by now. That's all I'm saying. Why wait so long? That's true. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Okay. All right, Julianne. It's very fascinating, very intriguing. Thank you so much. We're going to hear more. I'm sure. We'll be back right after this. So like, if you see all these things and people see them, why haven't they made contact then? I'm like, how Some many years? Say they have.